What's up guys, Steve with Steve Invest, helping real estate agents, real estate brokers, and investors grow their businesses with a path toward financial freedom. Today I'm gonna to be talking about how to become mortgage free on where you live as quickly as possible. I'm gonna show you exactly what I've done to become mortgage free in literally less than four years. So stick with me. Look, most people when they're buying a house usually look at three things. Number one is how to get into a house with as little money down as possible. Number two is what is the maximum amount that they're gonna be approved for because they wanna get the, the best house and best condo, whatever the case is, and they usually max that number out. So if they're approved for, say, $400,000, they're gonna go right up to $400,000 and buy uh, up to exactly that max amount that they're approved for in many cases. And number three, payment, payment conscious. What's gonna be their payment out the door where they feel comfortable? We're in a payment society. If you look at any kind of uh, commercials regarding uh, financing a car, it's all on payment. They really don't talk about necessarily the price and the interest you're gonna be paying. It's more, hey, you can get into this car with little money down and uh, your monthly payment is gonna be this amount. So a lot of people just look at the monthly payment and what they can afford. Now in this video, I want you to think a little bit differently. Follow my train of thought. This is not a video on how to um, take another $1,000 a month and put toward your mortgage or add an additional payment per month uh, to reduce your uh, mortgage over time. This is an aggressive way to eliminate your mortgage very quickly. Look, my goal was to achieve financial freedom and in doing so, I achieved uh, a very stressless life, a very stressless way of living. And I can tell you, once I achieved that, it has changed my life. Look, back in 2007, I was doing really well in real estate. I was making a lot of commission dollars. And uh, the problem was my cost of living was so high. I was running about $5,000 a month for my personal overhead, which you know, in hindsight, I look back on, I think it's just completely ridiculous. I think it's completely irresponsible. As for a single person, I was spending $5,000 a month. I had a condo on the water, huge mortgage. You know, I had a boat. We're spending a ton of money in gas every single uh, week going out on that. And I just, I was spending so much money on personal overhead that I knew I needed to make a change, especially with the market correction in real estate. I knew that I had to make a change and, and make that change very quickly. So what I did was I liquidated everything kind of to start over and uh, in doing so I, I went to the extreme. I even spent some time living in my office. I'll put a link for that so you guys can check that video out too. It's pretty, pretty interesting. But uh, I wanted to reduce my personal overhead as low as possible and start over. And in doing so I'm going to show you exactly how I was able to start over and become mortgage free fairly quickly in less than four years. All right, there's two very important parts to this. Number one is you have to buy right, okay? So if you're not a uh, real estate agent or you're not a real estate investor, be sure that you get with um, a good real estate agent that's gonna be able to find you the right deals on the market. You have to buy right. You have to buy the property that needs work. You have to buy the property that might be in a distressed situation where um, you can you can cash somebody out fairly quickly and get a discount on that property. So you're looking for the, the rusty properties, the properties that need work where when you do buy them, you do have instant equity, okay? That's number one. Number two is you have to remain conservative. After you sell this property, you have to remain conservative. So that doesn't mean that you're gonna take the funds from this and then you're gonna go necessarily to a big leap, uh, meaning uh, a higher valuation on the next property. So you have to remain conservative. You have to be humble. You might not necessarily live in the nicest properties in the beginning, but if you stick to this plan, you will eventually get to better and better properties. Even my current situation, I moved from, uh, and I'm gonna walk you through this, from a $21,000 small condo, not necessarily the best area, and now I'm, uh, now I'm on Bonita Beach, and uh, the value of that property is around $400,000 just by following this plan. Um, also, one thing I wanna point out, this is all tax-free. This strategy that I'm gonna walk you through, it's 100% tax-free. I still encourage you to speak with an accountant as well as maybe a real estate attorney, but doing this strategy, utilizing our laws in the United States, this will allow you to reap these gains without paying any taxes. All right, you have to live somewhere. So this, this plan is 
strictly for your primary residence where you're going to be living. So the plan is every two years you're going to sell your homestead. You're going to sell the property you lived in. Hopefully you bought right, put money into it, and the market didn't cra uh, crash necessarily even if it's in a flat market. Um, also, we're going to talk about if the market is declining, how you can expedite this as well. But you're going to wait this out every two years. So you're going to buy a property. Two years later, you're going to sell it. All right. So when I started all over, I went and I found a one bedroom, one bathroom condo. Not necessarily the best area, but I was able to pick that condo up for $21,000. I put roughly $10,000 into that property. So my all in on that property is $31,000. All right, so two years later, I was able to put this thing on the market and I wound up selling it for $74,000. Our acquisition plus renovation costs is $31,000. The closing costs associated with this to close it out on the back end was $4,000. I did have a personal loan on the property, so I was able to cash out $29,000, but my gain on it was $39,000 tax-free. All right, so as soon as that condo was in contract, I went on the hunt. I was able to find a property. The real estate agent was marketing this property as non-livable. And uh, I can tell you, I went into this thing. The non-livable aspect was the well equipment didn't work. So uh, for, for years, this property sat vacant. It was a property that was inherited uh, by the son. And uh, I was actually able to work out a seller finance deal on this property as well. So let's look at the numbers. I was able to buy the property for $89,000. Um, they required $30,000 down. So if you recall from the condo, I had uh, $39,000 net from that. So anyway, $30,000 down. Uh, the amount financed was $59,000. All right, so again, I purchased the property for $89,000. I put about $40,000 into this property. now. Um, these properties at the end of the day they became kind of my piggy bank so as I would make money in real estate real estate commissions I would take those commission dollars and I put it right into the house into different projects I had the projects kind of prioritized so as I made more money I just put the money right into the house so I ended up selling this property for hundred and seventy nine thousand my net gain from this transaction was 50,000. So tax-free, I was able to come out of this property with $50,000 gain. Uh, my closing costs associated with that sale was about 9,000. The amount financed uh, after paying that property down is roughly about 50,000. So uh, my cash out on that was 120,000. So I had $120,000 now to work with. And I knew in our market at that time, um, I knew that I can definitely pick up other properties for, you know, low 100, so that's what I did. So the first two properties sold out the door in about four years, just over four years. I was able to accumulate $120,000 to work with. I did find the next property. The next property actually turned out to be a mobile home on the water. Uh, Gulf access um, you could build a single family on the property so the land value was actually worth about a hundred and ten thousand so I did wind up picking that property up for a hundred and ten no mortgage at all um, I did end up I'd say about five months later flipping that property I put a little bit of work into it I bought a little boat a little sea fox boat that I included in the sale for that property as well uh, I believe I made about a twenty thousand twenty five thousand dollar gain on that property and then I just took that money and then found the next property, which was a condo across the street from the beach, picked that property up for 150. Still no, still no mortgage at the end of the day because I had the accumulated funds from these transactions. And I uh, just kept doing that. And that, that condo for 150 I picked up, wound up selling that thing over after two years, ended up picking up another beachfront property, which I kept rolling that into the next one, next one, next one, which led into uh, the property I'm in right now. Look, at the end of the day, I lived in a construction zone and sometimes I still do. And um, it, it's kind of uncomfortable, it can be a pain in the ass, but at the end of the day, if you guys live in the construction zone, you're doing some of the work yourself, 
Um, you guys are working at night doing a lot of the finishing work and painting and, and some of the stuff that's the, the easier stuff to do. You guys can make this happen. Now what happens if you're in a declining market, a flat market, or just kind of an unstable market and uh, you don't know what's going to happen in a two year period. The next step is you will not necessarily be able to um, have your gain free and clear. Your gain will be taxed. But you guys can expedite this as well. So what you can do is you can buy the properties, immediately start fixing them up, and then once they're getting close to the point of uh, being completed, you go ahead and just list them right away. Now you probably will get hit with capital gain taxes on these properties, so you want definitely want to speak with your accountant. Your goal is to try to get that thing on the market as fast as possible, sell it, move into the next property. All I'm saying is if there's a will, there's a way. And if you guys are determined to become mortgage free as quickly as possible, this is one way to do it. If you guys have been following me for a bit, you know I'm all about financial freedom. So I do have another clip on uh, how to become financially free. Go ahead and check that out and I'll see you guys there and I appreciate the support. Thanks.